pretend like we know what we're doing and fuck off. Right. Uh, bravo, it is time for you to die. Rockets, rockets. Oh my god, how many kills did I just get? Multi kill, seven kills. G'day, g'day. In today's video, we're going to be checking out close air support action in the BF-110, and we're going to be taking a look at the game Enlisted. Now, if you don't know what this game is, or you haven't been under a rock for the last uh, few weeks, this is a brand new game that's come to the market, and I've been having immense fun playing it just as a casual project. It's a casual arcade shooter with realistic settings, and it kind of fits the bill for a replacement for Heroes and Generals for me, as well as a few other games. But... With that, it has its own inherent problems, but we'll get into that later, or probably in another video in, it, in itself. We're going to get rid of the P-38 up here. That's exactly what we're going to do. I don't like P-38s. They uh, are more maneuverable than me. They can basically outturn you. They can do a bunch more things better than you do, and they have a better field of view when sitting in the cockpit, and so on and so forth. Anyway, we're going to go in and actually just get a bunch of kills so the aim is to really support the team attacking and well actually i think we're defending this one playing as the germans so yes we're defending the beaches here someone's put a ping marker unfortunately i only get one kill on that run a waste of those rockets but still now that i know a rough direction of where the enemy is coming from and map knowledge becomes a bit of a play here so go to the rearm point come back reload and the in-air reloading points are quite interesting you can see I just put one, two down, barely avoid the church. That is a seven multi-kill at least, probably 12 or maybe 13 kills right there. That's just the explosive radius of these bloody little tiny ass 20, 21 centimeter rockets, I think they are. They're mounted directly underneath the wings and you can't really see them unless you go into the 3D preview menu, which I might put up on screen here in a second, but I'll show you all the stats of my 110 later. More importantly, you've just got to really estimate you know, flying in this game is really tricky. It's not like flying in War Thunder. Yes, it is mouse aim. WASD does work as well. Uh, Q and E as well for your rudder pedals. So you can, you know, do a bunch of different things. But as you can see there, when you estimate where an enemy is and you know where they are, there is a guarantee that you could basically kill everything as long as you, you know, be efficient with it. So go out, fly to the rearm point, which you can see is 1,500 meters away and then closing quickly. You just got to go near it, and when you get to about 100 meters in, you can basically turn around and head towards the objective again, because you don't need to fly directly through this particular capture zone. It's a wide berth area with some sort of sphere around it. See, it's a turn around now. Um, we've immediately reloaded in air. Anyway, turn back around, coming back in for another pass. And this is really important. You've got to look for the traces. There's a huge amount of fog of war here. And it's really quite interesting because the game dynamic can change quite quickly depending on how you can support your team. Look at all those multi-kills right there. Essentially, the flight models are very similar to War Thunder simulator uh, sort of controls. However, they are incredibly different in regards to they feel a little more floaty, a little more tame, I guess. And there is less control that you can have over the elevator and, and the authority of the aircraft itself. They feel incredibly heavy. And dogfighting in the BF-110 is you know, completely and utterly useless. You can't do that worth a damn. This is essentially just a air support vehicle. And as you can see, I'm making the same run over and over again with just slight variations. Someone was angry and tried shooting at me just then. Alas to them, they didn't necessarily get me. Went to the rearm point in the middle of the air. And we're going to go in for another run again, I suppose. You're still going? How, how much suffering do you need to satisfy your Solash? Well, it depends, because suffering in this game isn't as bad as what I initially expected. The game is monetized to ever living daylights, but it is still a fun game, and it's a casual shooter at that. Now, obviously, we're talking about close air support in this run, but, you know. Obviously, flying the P-38 is a lot better, and I highly recommend you go after that one in the American campaign. I have flown the HS-123, and I have also flown the I-153, the two Moscow campaign aircraft. They are in a different world, those particular aircraft. They fly exactly like they do in the simulator. The models are exactly the same as Warhunter. 
the control is a bit varied and very, very basic. Your flaps aren't necessarily the same keys. It's, it's keybind one and two. Flaps go up on one, uh, flaps go down on two. The gear goes down on the gear key. Uh, but it doesn't matter because you're not landing. And, and honestly, I, I'd prefer there to be this in-air rearm system anyway. It'd be nice to see bombers have this somewhere in War Thunder, but anyway, it doesn't necessarily matter. We're not talking about that game at all. And the damage models are a bit interesting. Obviously, you've got this the camera on the bottom left and the compass and your pilot on the indicator. And on the far right, on the you've got your rockets, your 37mm guns and your 30s. So yeah, you can pry open tanks pretty well with the 30s. I don't necessarily use them because there is a bit of a fog of war issue. I understand why they did this. They don't want aircraft to become completely overpowered, and to some extent they already are. I've seen JU-188s uh, run around bombing living daylights out of things, getting 30 multi-kills just by bombing an area of spawn. It happens. Maybe what they should do is delay the spawn of aircraft, I don't know. But anyway, here we come. Another run. Not so bad that time. Not, not exactly great, but still. Anything to support the team. Let's go back around again. Ooh, tricky there. This thing does tend to lock up quite a bit. And it's an aircraft which you need to be careful of. She's heavy. Fat, slow, and doesn't turn very well at all. And that's the first real control issue that you'll notice. But those of us who will get used to the vehicle will probably end up doing really well on it. And there is something to say and something satisfying about doing this repeat on repeat. After engaging that first P-38, the rest of the enemy team didn't necessarily bother taking out an aircraft to combat me. Had they actually done that, this outcome of the match might have been completely different, which is why it's always important to have multiple different squads ready to go to counter another potential threat, like persi persisting air cover, or, you know, in this case, me absolutely coming around and just gunning down absolutely everything and seeing what we can get here. Ooh, cutting it close there, nearly hitting the, the top of the trees. But suffice to say, they've got zero tickets, they have seven seconds, and we have basically one here with 140 so odd kilts. Pretty good, eh? Anyway, catch you later.